Okay, so this is the second lecture on Laplace transforms. <clears throat> We're gonna um, let me turn this up. We're going to uh, first of all uh, return to the problem that we did last time, which is this problem here. It involves a sphere uh, subjected to this um, uh, volumetric energy generation that decays exponentially. Um, Last time we solved this problem, and we did it by first um, deriving the governing differential equation, which is uh, right here. And uh, then we uh, did the Laplace transform of it, which made it algebraic. We solved for the solution in the uh, Laplace domain, and then finally we brought it back into the time domain, and that gave us a solution. Um, for problems like these that are ODEs, uh, what you're going to find is that Maple is super good at this, right? So um, we could do this entire problem once we once we derive the differential equation and the initial condition. We could do the entire problem in Maple uh, without ever really having to do anything ourselves. So here's the Maple code uh, that accomplishes that. Oh, if I can find it here, um, you can see. Um, I started uh, with the restart command to clear variables. Uh, I did make sure I loaded that integral transformation uh, library, right? And then <coughs> I uh, entered the ODE. So my ODE is uh, right here. Um, so this is the ODE we're trying to solve. Hopefully this ODE is exactly equal to this one right here. Um, and then I used the Laplace command to transform the entire ODE from the time domain to the s domain, right? So time is the symbol I'm using for time here, and then s is uh, the s domain. And so that's what I get right here, right? If we look at this a little bit, you can see this derivative became s times the Laplace transform, which is this big ugly mess, minus the, time, the temperature at time zero, which I haven't told anybody what that is yet. And then, um, this again becomes the Laplace transform of T. Uh, this right here becomes, it's a constant, so um, that constant over S, and this exponential uh, becomes you know, something over S plus one over A. So a couple things to do before we solve this. The first thing is this whole thing is just T, we've been calling it T of S, right? So <coughs> I'll use the subs command to substitute um, this big ugly mess for just T of S. So you can see that every place I had that, now I have just T of S and T of S. So that's good. Um, this is looking a lot more like what we have. Um, the other thing is I know the temperature at time equals zero, right? The temperature at time equals zero is T infinity. So I'm gonna use the subs command again to say that T at time equals zero is T infinity. So that's my solution, my transform problem in the S domain. Uh, then I gotta do algebra to solve for T of S. And of course, I just use the solve command for that. So I'm going to solve this equation, my algebraic equation in S for T of S. And I get this big ugly mess here. And normally, of course, I would have to do some partial fractions to try to get this into three different terms. Uh, but I don't have to do that if I'm using Maple. I can just directly use the inverse Laplace transform. And I'm going to inverse Laplace transform this T of S from the S domain back to the time domain. And that's what I get right there. And if I just literally pick this up and plop it into E's, uh, I can, um, well, I should start E's. I can, um, I can make sure that it, it uh, looks the same as the solution that I got myself. So let me do that real quick. <clears throat> Here's the ease code that I had before. I'll make it a little bigger. This is the solution that I did myself. And then this right here is uh, the solution I copied from Maple. Right? And if I, um, if I um, overlay these two uh, solutions, you'll see that they're exactly the same, which of course they should be. So the blue line is the one I had before, and then these dots are um, predicted by Maple. So uh, that's a pretty easy way to do these kind of problems. Um, 
and, and maple is a really good tool for, for some parts of Laplace transform. We'll actually see that uh, if I had a, um, a solution here in the S domain that was more complicated, like the kinds that we're going to get today when we start doing 1D transient problems, when I use the inverse Laplace function right here, I'm not going to get an answer. Maple's just going to say I can't, I can't do it. So that's where um, it's nice to know about some of these functions that people have written uh, that can do the inverse Laplace transform uh, numerically, right? So um, the one <clears throat> that I'm going to show you, and I think there's a whole bunch of these, um, is uh, called Talbot inversion, right? It's a function in, in MATLAB. And basically what it does is it says, you know, if you can solve the problem in the S domain, so if you can get to this point here, right? So here's our problem. We transformed it to the S domain, which made it this. We did just a little bit of algebra, which turned it into this. And then we struggled to get it back to the time domain. But if I can just get this function in the S domain, then I'm in business in terms of using some of these numerical transformations. So, um, the one that we're going to talk about is uh, this one called uh, Talbot inversion. Uh, the way this works is um, you give it the name of a function or a mapping to a function um, that will evaluate the solution in the S domain, right? And you also give it a vector of times in the time domain, and it will tell you for this function in the S domain, what, are, what is its value at these times? Uh, and how it does that is basically magic, as near as I can tell, but it's, it's really pretty cool, right? So this uh, first argument is, you know, just like when we were doing like ODE 45 or something like that, that is the name of a function you have to write, right? You have to write the function that is going to implement your solution in the S domain, just like you had to write the function that would implement the state equation when we were using the numerical ODE solvers. Um, this is a function that's written for you, right? You would never open this up and modify it. You're just calling it and telling it to act on this function that you write. Um, this is not a function that comes with MATLAB, so you'll need to download it from the web page. Um, but <clears throat> once you've downloaded it, um, you know it's it's pretty easy to use. So here's here's uh, an example of using it, right? So the Talbot inversion function. This is not something I wrote, right? This is again something you have to download. Um, and there's, this is just one of many of these that you could download and use that different people write. What you have to write is a function like this. And the function is basically your function in the S domain, right? So you give that function, uh, obviously, S. This is actually a vector of S's, right? And then also whatever else you need. So in this case, T infinity and, and some other parameters that we need in order to actually uh, implement this function, right? So uh, a vector of S's, and then we need T infinity, um, tau, you know, all this other stuff. And then <clears throat> what this is going to do is for every value of S here, it will return a value of T hat, right? So there are a couple ways of doing it. I did it here both ways. Um, the f one way to do it, if you're not super familiar with MATLAB, is you just say, okay, how big is this vector of S? And then I will build a loop that for every value of s in this vector will return t hat, right? That's fine. It's much more sophisticated or cleaner just to use these dot operators here, which says, you know, do the same thing to every element of the array. Um, these two, this and this, do the same thing, right? So either way is fine. And you can test it and make sure it's working. Once you've got this function working, then you just need to call Talbot inversion. So that's what I did here. Um, you know, I tested the function, made sure it worked. And then, you know, here is my, um, this stuff is actually uh, the analytical solution, just so I have something to compare it to, right? But here is me calling the Talbot inversion, right? And here's the function that I wrote that implements my solution in the S domain, right? This needs to be a function only of S, so I'm mapping this to S, right? So just like we map things uh, to, to time and temperature, uh, when we were calling ODE45, here I'm mapping it just to S. And then this is a vector of times. So here's my times. Um, some of these zero doesn't work very well. I'm not sure about this one. So what am I doing here then? I am <clears throat> having a vector of times. 
for every value of the vector of time, I'm, anal I'm, I'm evaluating the actual analytical solution. So this is the one we came up with ourselves. And then here I'm using the numerical inversion to evaluate the temperature at the same time, right? So hopefully the, I guess this is a black line and these blue dots uh, line up with each other. So we can run this and uh, look at it uh, somewhere, I think. Here. And sure enough, right, the black line is our analytical solution and the blue dots are the, are the solution that we just got, right? So again, this is really going to come in handy when I have a solution in the S domain like this where I can't find an analytical inverse Laplace transform for it, right? I can just, but I can stop there and write a function like this and use uh, something like uh, this Talbot inversion function to to do the, the heavy lifting for me. <clears throat> so uh, this is, uh, again, a problem that we could have done, um, you know, ourselves before we learned about uh, Laplace transforms. This is a lump capacitance problem. What we'll do next is a problem that is uh, one dimensional and transient. So that's a problem that at this point, other than separation of variables, we don't really have a tool that can that can solve it, right? So, um, 